Video games have a long and varied history. Each generation has built upon what the previous iteration had to offer, and in many cases, new mechanics have become industry standard. Running left to right, for example, is just the way to progress through a level. A couple of games have attempted to break this trend, but let's be honest, when was the last time you heard Commander Keen mentioned? That's right, never. But throughout all of the trends that have come and gone, there's one that's remained constant, and that's cold-blooded murder. Recently, I've become a bit disillusioned with the way my channel's been going. More often than not, I seem to be talking about some socio-political issue I'm not really qualified to give my opinion on. I wanted to go back to my roots and just play some video games. No unasked for opinions, no disproportionately simple analysis of widely complex topics, just classic retro too many moths content. So, this is video games where you kill people. Over the last year or so, I found myself struggling with background footage. Subjects like addiction or culture are so abstract it's difficult to visualise them for a video. So what I ended up doing was just feature random gameplay clips when I couldn't think of anything else. Sounds perfectly fine, but the game I chose to feature was Roller Coaster Tycoon, and looking back at it, it's a bit concerning when I'm talking about some mundane topic like YouTubers I don't like, and in the background there's just casual mass homicide. Roller Coaster Tycoon is a weird game. I spoke a bit recently about games that deserve higher age ratings. Roller Coaster Tycoon is another one that managed to slip through the cracks. In Team Fortress 2, you shoot a couple of people and capture a point. Roller Coaster Tycoon is like, hold my beer. Whoops. When you think about it, Roller Coaster Tycoon is very progressive and educational. It's helped a lot of children discover the joys of management and engineering. Here are a few more more things that Roller Coaster Tycoon has helped to spread awareness of. Construction. Decoration. Information. Deforestation. Mutilation. Segregation. Human cremation. You can literally roast a human over an open fire. This game is 3 plus. You know, I'm not the kind of person who thinks video games should be banned for being violent, but after playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, I can almost begin to understand where these mother's complaints are coming from. This game is brutal. When did killing people become so normalised? <laughs> Look at me becoming all socio-political. We're not going down that route again. We could analyse games like Hatred or Postal and discuss whether they should be allowed in modern day culture, but let's be honest, those games are fucking boring, so let's not do that. Instead, let's go back to 1985 when Super Mario dominated the industry. Now, I'm not entirely sure where the trope of jumping on enemies came from, but I do know that Mario had to be one of the first to do it and this dude was relentless in his onslaught. Travelling through the Mushroom Kingdom, committing a calculated genocide towards the Koopa race before dropping their king into a literal pit of lava. No prisoners taken on this adventure. But Mario wasn't finished yet. He went on to kill all seven of King Koopa's children. And it's not like, oh, they could have survived. They were dropped into lava too. They were just kids, Mario. Will your lust for blood never be satisfied? It would appear the more child-friendly a game is, the more horrifying it is when you take a moment to think about what's actually happening. I mean, Mario makes games like Splatterhouse seem seem almost tame in comparison. At least the monsters in that game were actually monsters. They didn't have family, friends, ambitions, dreams, futures. Mario is an old game, but I think we can go back further, all the way back to the first video games. The first video game was Tennis for Two. Not much killing in that, I should hope at least.
I guess Chirachamp would have been the first game worth killing. Chirachamp was a chess algorithm developed in 1948 by Alan Turing and David Champernoun. The problem was, it was so complex that at the time it was written, there wasn't a computer powerful enough to actually run it. Despite this, it was technically one of the first, if not the first, computer program with killing in it. Now, fast forward 30 years to 1978 and we get to this. Space Invaders. The culmination of all those years of hard work and research, we can finally kill aliens on a computer. Space Invaders is of course famous for being the game where the hardware not being powerful enough became an actual feature, as it became faster and faster as more processing power was freed up. You know, Aliens are always painted as being the bad guys, but from what I see, it's you who's carrying out a mass slaughter of their people. This flying saucer wasn't even doing anything to harm you, but you shoot it down no less like the heartless, cold-blooded murderer you are. This is a game called Light People on Fire. Would you like to hazard a guess as to what you do in Light People on Fire? Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got it. Flash games are an odd sort. They exist primarily on the internet and as such have managed to bypass the tyrannical reign of the video game content rating system. Because of this, Flash developers aren't exactly limited in how they express themselves through video. In fact, they can do whatever the hell they like. Effing worms. Why is murdering huge numbers of innocent human beings so gosh darn addictive? Some flash games are mostly quite tame, you slap a rubber monkey to see how far he'll go. Others are a bit worse, in Defend Your Castle you drop stick figures from a great height and watch them explode into bloody viscera. In Kitten Cannon you shoot a kitten out of a cannon and hilarity ensues. In Interactive Buddy you torture a virtual creature for no apparent reason. I mean, you can play with him if you like, but that's clearly not the intended purpose of this game when most of the unlocks consist of shotguns, flamethrowers and a medieval flail. To further build upon this, there's a mode that gives you access to the scripting engine that allows you to make your own items. Just think of all the endless possibilities of this feature. Just think of all the endless gameplay hours you could extend this small little tech demo by and of course everyone has just programmed instant death. This was one of my favourites as a kid, Dad and Me. You play as this uh, oddly purple boy and enjoy a lovely day at the park beating the ever-living shit out of all the other kids there. Now, if I said I'd never imagined myself in this position, I'd be lying, but I wouldn't actually do it. Who hasn't imagined themselves killing someone? And you may say this is no different to any other beat-em-up, and that may be true, except these kids don't have weapons, they can't defend themselves. This game is literally just a murder simulator, why is it so f***ing fun? This isn't even the worst that Flash games have to offer, Chainsaw the Children. You know, when I have an idea for a video, I like to jot down notes for it on my phone. So I'm just on the bus making a list of everything I can think of and I've just written down Chainsaw the Children when I realise uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this in public at the risk of being arrested. I mean, how am I going to explain a list of hatred, light people on fire and Chainsaw the Children? I'd be put in solitary confinement for at least 30 years and how am I going to make videos then? Though, to be honest, I release videos so infrequently you probably wouldn't even notice a change in my upload schedule. Why is this game fun? Is this some kind of deep repressed desire? I'm almost scared to try and explain it at the risk of sounding like some kind of sociopath. Yeah, they're not actually real people, they're just pixels on a screen without memories friends or family, so it's fine. What is wrong with humans? It's like, as soon as there aren't any consequences for an action, it's completely okay. But this isn't a question for me to answer. I made a vow not to analyse this sort of stuff, 
So, if anyone would like to explain why humans find enjoyment in killing imaginary things, please, I'd love to know. But for now, I'm just going to chainsaw some children. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. Be